It's your boy A, typical security guard. If you're new to my channel today, uh, we're going to be talking about the intersection of rap beef, particularly the Drake versus everybody beef, and how that relates to private security. There's actually top five reasons that these two things converge perfectly, and I'm going to explain that today. And oddly enough, in the background, we got some beef sizzling. I mean, it's pork, but you, you get the point, right? We're cooking some beef over here. So Morgan is my co-host. She's in the kitchen right now. She's whipping up the breakfast. You can't see her, but you can hear her. How are you today? Fabulous. Are you aware of the recent Drake beef that has been going on? Well, only because you told me about it the other night. How do, how do you stay so uninformed of, of like, Everything. current events? You never know anything. Are you not on social media? You ain't out in these streets? I ain't out in these streets. Listen, no. I literally, Instagram and Facebook and whatever else, it doesn't matter. I fucking hate social media. I only have them because I have to have them for my business. Yeah. And... The only things that are even remotely interesting to me are watching reels on Instagram or maybe Facebook. Or I like the video side on Facebook because, like, I watched this super rich girl get arrested last I, night. So. I love the fact that, like, no matter what I bring to you, you have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. No. Which gives you, like, a, a good position to comment on things because, like, you don't have any influence, right? So for anybody who is not aware, I am a huge, huge, huge Drake fan. Before we go any further, I need to be transparent. I'm a huge Drake fan. And I'm going to tell you why I'm a huge Drake fan. Because I can relate. I can relate to Drake. How is that, right? I grew up in a all-white neighborhood. So being a young black man in an all-white neighborhood, like I get the perception that other... Hey, shut up. I'm spitting over here. I get the perception and I get the the dichotomy of how people in the black community, in quotation marks, because there is no fucking black community, but how people in the black community view a black person or a biracial person that's not from the hood. I went through that exact same shit. Mm -hmm. So I relate to that. I understand like, and, and that's going to come into play with what we're going to be talking about. So... That's number one. Number two, like when I got divorced, you know, uh, So Far Gone had just come out. Like that album, it fucking hit. You know, Drake is a very emotional, <laughs> a very sad, emotional person. And when I was going through my divorce, like that album had just come out. And I don't know, it just hit. And I was working in, I was working in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. This was in 2008. Okay. End of 2008. And... They had a, a local like community college, and at this local community college, they had a concert. The girl that I was dating at the time, she worked at the local hotel. Okay, now I had just gotten the So Far Gone mixtape, and she was like, "Man, it was crazy at work tonight." She's like, "They had a concert down at the community college, and this dude, I guess he's like famous from like being on some kids show." And I'm like, "Who was it?" And she was like, "What was his name?" Um, she was like, "Oh my God, I met him." Uh, uh, Aubrey or Drake, uh, Drake. I'm like, what? Like she had literally met Drake right before he blew up. All right. So that's the backstory. Let's get to the beef. How are there five ways that there's an intersection between what's going on in the rap world and private security? Number one and most common to us in private security, because we receive a lot of unnecessary hate, a lot of unnecessary bullshit. And so does Drake. Number one, he's generally just doing his job. Now, what is his job, right? His job is to make music. Whether you like his music or you don't like his music is irrelevant. If he chooses to be on some street shit or some R&B shit is irrelevant. The guy is generally doing his job. Now, as a fan of Drake's for, what is it? 2024, 19. So as a fan of Drake's for like 14 years, I've never heard this dude come at anybody. I've never heard him start any shit with anybody. Generally, he's living his life. Now, does he do some corny shit? Yes. Does he do some goofball shit? Yes. Does he release some bad music? Yes. I admit all of this. 
To be fair, you are very trans. Like, I'm, I'm transparent. When he drops an album, you're always like, "This album." This ain't it. Rich. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Listen, I am not a dick writer. I don't. I don't say just because I'm a fan of somebody that everything that they do is like on point, right? right. And it's no different in the private security industry. I'm not ever coming on here on my channel. You'll never hear me on my channel saying that security guards don't do goofy shit. That security guards don't get out of their lane. That security guards aren't on some cornball shit. I say that stuff literally every single fucking day. That is the entirety of my channel here, right? I'm always talking about the negative things that private security guards are doing. Yeah. And I'm just as... As clear, concise, and and transparent about Drake, he does some goofball shit. Now, the fact that he does goofball shit, the fact that he's corny, the fact that he's like, you know, on some R and B stuff sometimes, does that give credence to people taking shots at him any more than it gives credence to people giving security guards a hard time? I do not think that is so. The second thing is that, oddly enough, despite, despite the fact that he's extremely successful, rich, he's in a weaker position. Now, two things cannot be true. Either rappers like Rick Ross, Kendrick Lamar, Future, all these people are punching down on a weaker person. Because the thought process is that, you know, Drake is, is fake. Drake is, uh, you know, from uh, an affluent area. He's wealthy. He ain't about that street shit. Okay, well, if that's the case, then why are you always taking shots? Why are you always taking shots at the guy that's not from the hood? Why are you taking shots at the guy that's not on some street shit? I worked in a prison. I've worked in two prisons. People that are in prison don't get any points for picking on the weaker guy. So if you're from the hood, if you're from the street, if you're the fucking gangster, if you're about that life, and there's some cornball that is from, you Which know, happens. some yeah, some <laughs> suburban area, you don't get any points or any street cred for picking on the cornball. Now, when 50 Cent was out here roasting Rick Ross, and putting up pictures about him being a fucking CO and, and talking shit, there was no smoke for 50 Cent. I think that it is arguably understood that 50 Cent, whether you like him or not, is not with the bullshit. And he will pull up and come see you. So when 50 was talking shit about Rick Ross, when 50 was dropping songs about Rick Ross, when 50 was talking about Rick Ross's mama, when 50 trolls anybody, everybody's real fucking quiet. Real quiet. I follow 50 on uh, on Instagram. You can go through his Instagram. He's talking shit about Floyd Mayweather. He's talking shit about Rick Ross. He's talking shit about Future. He's talking shit about everybody in the industry. And everybody keeps their fucking mouth closed. I find that highly ironic. So if Drake is this cornball, weak, R&B singer, you know, insignificant nobody, why are you taking shots at him? Now, if that's not the case, then he must be the opposite of that. Because if all of these rappers, Rick Ross, Metro, Future, ASAP Rocky, Kendrick Lamar, to an extent you could say J. Cole, if they're all teaming up like the fucking Avengers to go after one person, he must be that dude. Now, how does this tie into private security? Look, a security guard is already in a weaker position. You know, when you go into a store, that guy's making minimum wage. He's got very little authority. He's trying to enforce some sort of policy. Now, if you as a customer, a client, a shopper, or a dirtbag are giving a private security guard who we all can understand is in a weaker position, a weaker position because he's tied to that job. He has to work that job to make his money, to get his paycheck, and we all realize the, the, the low level of authority that a security guard has, the low level of, of power to enforce certain things that a security guard has. If you come in on some bullshit towards that security guard, you're a fucking piece of shit. You're a piece of shit if you're punching down at somebody who is clearly in a weaker position. 
Now, if your attitude is that you're going to come into the store like a lot of people and say, I'm going to come back, I'm going to beat your ass, I'm going to come back, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to do this, blah, 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 and I'm bringing my boys with me, okay, well then maybe now you're admitting that I'm actually that dude. Because two things can't be true at the same time. Either you're punching down because of the position that I'm in, or you're telling me that you're coming back with a gun, or you're coming back with your boys, because deep down, you know I'm that motherfucker. That's how those two things line up. Number three, mob mentality. Mob mentality. There's this, this idea, for whatever reason, you know, everybody wants to go with this one dude. I'm not sitting here literally dick riding for Drake. I'm drawing a parallel. I'm trying to draw a parallel. I'm teaching right now. It's Professor Damien Hour. Okay, the mob mentality, for whatever reason, specifically in the in the black community, in the black experience, we have this desire to see each other fail and see each other fall. I don't get it. One week ago, one week ago, J. Cole comes out. He's like, look, I'm not even going down this road. I'm not going down this road. I know people want to see me and Kendrick Lamar get into it and go back and forth. I'm not going down this road. I don't want to go down this road. I like his music. I like what he stands for. I like what he does. I appreciate what he brings to the table. I think he's a great artist. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to do my thing. He can do his thing. And that wasn't good enough for the entire black community. Everybody came out on social media. Oh, J. Cole, you're a bitch. Oh, J. Cole, you're a pussy. Oh, J. How on earth can a grown man come out in 2024 on some grown man shit and say, I have no desire to tear that man down? And then everybody from a industry standpoint, everybody from a social media standpoint, they want the drama. Now, when I was in high school, this was during the East Coast, West Coast rap beef. Everybody was either on some East Coast shit or some West Coast shit. All the major magazines from the Vi from Vibe to The Source, right, to uh, whatever other magazines or publications that were out there, MTV, BET, everybody hyping up this East Coast, West Coast shit. And ultimately, two great artists, and the underlying, uh, underlying issue is two great black men lost their lives. They lost their lives so that record labels could make money, so that, you know, people could be entertained. That's absolutely ridiculous. This mob mentality that, like, it's, it's to our pleasure to watch people tear each other down. And that's exactly what we have seen time and time again when there's an issue in the private security sector. The guy up in Seattle... As big of a goofball, as big of a cornball, as much as he brought a lot of that stuff on himself, there has been a mob mentality over the last two weeks to throw this guy under the bus. And not just that guy, but private security in general. You guys don't even realize that if you're working in the private security sector, the things that have come out in terms of the way that people have responded to that security guard in Seattle, that is going to have repercussions across the board for our industry. And a lot of us are to blame. A lot of security guards that are online talking shit. A lot of security guards that are being interviewed by news organizations, throwing the industry under the bus, talking about what we don't need to have on, what we shouldn't be able to carry, what we shouldn't be able to do. And all that's going to be used against us. No different, no different than if this rap beef were to spiral out of control and something were to happen to any one of these guys. It's going to have long lasting repercussions because everybody wants to be on some mob mentality shit. The fourth thing is racism, racist slurs. Guys, I've told you this. I have no problem admitting this. There is not one day that goes by at my job where I am not called a nigger. Not one day. And I've been working there for four years. Now, when this whole thing starts with Rick Ross and, and Drake and Kendrick, it's supposed to be about keeping it on wax. It's supposed to be about rap beef, right? But to be fair, and I have no issues with Rick Ross. I like some of his music, but let's be honest. Nobody goes anywhere and asks for Rick Ross. Nobody. 
I don't, I've never had, I used to, be, I used to be a DJ. I DJ three nights a week, like seven months out of the year. No one came up to me and asked me to play any Rick Ross. Okay. I'm just saying that. So the fact that he's trying to come back at Drake and, and get involved in this beef, what's it devolve into? He does a, a one and a half minute song. And then the rest of the time he spends his time talking about how Drake's a white boy. How he's a white boy, how he got a nose job, like just some some dumb shit. And and generally, the issues when it comes to people dealing with me in the private security space, if they're coming from a place of of being out of line on some bullshit, it devolves into racism. Because you're not gonna say, you know, I'm not that security guard where you're gonna be like, oh, you weak motherfucker. Nobody thinks I'm weak. No one's going to say, oh, you're a, a little piece of shit. That, that's not going to happen. No one's going to say that I'm not professional. No one's going to say that there, there's very little negative that you can say to me because of my presence, my size, how I carry myself. So what does it devolve into when you have nothing to say? It becomes a racist attack. Oh, fuck you. You're a nigger. You fucking nigger. Da -da 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 -da. Like that's supposed to be the end all be all. To, to some sort of issue between me and somebody else, right? In my opinion, when it gets to that point, like it, it, from, from, a, from a rap standpoint, if that's what we're on, we're talking about the fact that he's, that he's half white. You're talking about the fact that, you know, you think he got some plastic surgery? All right, well, I, we're done. Like that, that's not lyrical to me. Last thing, number five, it's all good until, what do I mean by that? It's all good for all these rappers to come at Drake until they need a hit. Every single one of those people that was on that track, every single one of those people that have come out over the past weekend talking shit, I'm going to say the vast majority of them. I know Rick Ross. I'm pretty sure J. Cole. And I know Future. Their number one hits all came from a feature with Drake. No different than private security. It's all good until everybody's got something to say about the security guard. I had a chick that, that put a post on my uh, on one of my videos and she was like, I work at a Walgreens. I'm not in Seattle, but I'm in a different area. And I just want to say as an employee, I should not feel threatened or I should not feel concerned or worried that the security guard is overly dressed that the security guard has a, a tactical mentality. I shouldn't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to be shot in the crossfire, whether or not I'm going to be harmed because a security guard is overly aggressive. And I said to her, what you shouldn't have to deal with is irrelevant. If there's a security guard there, it's probably because there have been some issues. You shouldn't have to worry about the fact that a crackhead is going to come in and rob the store. You shouldn't have to worry that maybe someone's going to come in and get into a domestic situation and in the process of them fighting, they bump into you and that, and that hurts or harms you. You shouldn't be in a situation where a mass shooter comes in. You shouldn't have to deal with that. But you might. That's why we're here. Okay? So it's all good until, and in every situation, people that have a problem with private security guards, people that have a problem with how we dress, people that have a problem with what we do, people that have a problem with us being there, every single time the crackhead attacks somebody, the person assaults someone at the, the parking lot, the fucking domestic violence situation gets out of control and some woman's getting beat. I saw this yesterday, right? When someone's getting their head blown off in the parking lot, then all of a sudden, everybody is a fan of Damien. Where's the big guy at? Right? We went to a party. Wife and I went to a party a couple years ago. It was a birthday party for some friends. Very liberal setup. Like everybody's outside. They had rented out or or blocked off like a couple blocks of this area. Oh, the right? Remember? Yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're downtown. They're having this great party. In the park blocks. It, it, we're down there, and when we drive up, I'm like, this is where the party is. They literally have a like a one block section in a park in downtown Portland roped off for this one party. 
people are dancing, they've got a DJ, they've got food. And I'm looking at the area and I'm seeing the homeless people on the peripheral and they're all like, that food looks good. And I'm like, oh, this is only a matter of time. All of these people that were there, good people, well-meaning people, but these would be the people that would have an issue with a private security guard being in their store. But the second one of those homeless people crawled through the rope, came over, stole somebody's cell phone, got aggressive, everybody started screaming for me. I'm not working. I don't work here. What are y'all screaming for me for? Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing to do with this. But, Everybody. But when the shit hits the fan, everybody's looking for somebody else to come over there and deal with it. That is what the whole rap industry has been for the past 12 years. Right? He's the cornball, goofball, R&B, white kid until you're not getting any fucking hits and you're not on the charts and you're not making any money, I would assume, and then you're reaching out trying to get a feature. I DJed three nights a week from 2011 to 2016. Literally 90% of the shit that people wanted to hear was Drake. That's just a fact. Nobody requested Future. Nobody requested Rick Ross. Nobody requested ASAP Rocky. Like, all great artists in their own right. Nobody's checking for you. Just reality. Any thoughts? Yeah, they're just mad. They're just mad for exactly what you said. And it, life is nothing but a game. We're all playing different games. I have to play a different game as a woman. You have to play a different game as a black man. And Drake has learned how to play the game. And they're just mad. That's right. Jealousy is Maybe a... Maybe they should buy the girls they fuck Birkin bags. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would win over a bigger community too, okay? Like, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. 99% of women are looking at Drake like, thank you. Yeah. I won't call you again. Got my bag, thanks. <laughs> like, the fuck? But... Yeah, seriously, they're they're just mad. He has learned how to play the game. It don't fucking matter. And this goes back to the conversation we had a few weeks ago when we're we talked about country artists, right? And which is so funny this is happening because I think privately, like not on camera, we talked about this with Drake in relation to that, right? Because I think at the time I was like, people don't I don't really hear people other Stop artists. scratching me. Stop it. I, I see you. Here, other artists give him a hard time about rapping in this because he's from an affluent family and he, you know, isn't a gangbanger and wasn't raised like that. But like we talked about that with country music people who aren't yeah we did talk about that and, yeah and who aren't farmers or who aren't from small town and know about you know gravel roading and this and that like should people be able to do that? And on that hand, we were like, you know, yeah, like if that's your who gives a fuck right well, like the like, people like, who aren't succeeding give a fuck like gatekeeping is so corny to me mm -hmm. I, there's one person on my facebook i don't even know you know you ever realize like when somebody is putting up annoying shit on facebook you're like why am i friends with this person i mean you you probably don't deal with that because you have like a very small circle but i have this one person that keeps popping up every single day she's putting up like some hate beyonce post I'm like, why do you care? Like, Beyonce ain't, don't fucking care what you think about her. People are stupid. No one, like, no one watches the, no one watches Chris Pratt in Jurassic Park and they're like, you don't really know nothing about dinosaurs. Like, that would be stupid. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't really from the, ga the galaxy. What are you doing? You ain't from the galaxy up here in this galaxy ass motherfucker. You ain't from the galaxy. Just enjoy the fucking entertainment or don't. Like, I don't understand this whole gatekeeping thing. People just want to be seen. It doesn't matter what... So, not to detract from your topic, but she just... If she's getting engagement on it, she's making posts because people are engaging on them. All right, that makes sense. Okay. On her end. But you still see it across the board. Like, yeah. it's something that... Like, the whole Beyonce thing is huge right now. Mm-hmm. Like, this, this hate. I don't... I mean, I do... Well, listen. I understand it. I mean, we know, we know, the, we know the real thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
All right. Grand Rising. All right. That's my that's my topic today. The intersection of Drake hate and private security. How they how they align. Yeah. It was a I'm surprised you uh college you, essay. Do you remember the night we met and you asked me if I liked Drake? Yes. <laughs> I can't believe you. Because I had tickets to the concert. And I when I first met you, my first thought was, I should take her to that concert. Because I, I didn't have a date to go to the concert. Well, obviously, and you ended up taking it. I'm just saying, I can't believe you even talked to me after that. Because you were like... Did you ever wear that outfit ever again? That was you look, that was a bad outfit. You looked hot that night. What Did you ever wear that again? Mm -mm. Do you have it? Mm, I don't know. You should you should find that and wear that. Maybe in honor of this video, you should wear that tonight. Um, I'm surprised you still, in general, talked to me after that because you were like, "Oh, do you like Drake?" What and I said, "Who's Drake?" And you were like, "Drake, the artist." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> You're like Drake, and I'm like, "I don't know who that is." And you just looked at me like I grew a second head, and you were like, "Have you heard that song by Rihanna?" Yeah, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I know yeah. that song." And you're like. He did that song with her, and I went, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, I had no fucking clue. Know, and literally, I know, I know. it Listen, was... Listen, can I be honest with you, though? Yeah. Let me say this. And you know that you know what I'm going to say is true, right? That is the level of white girl that I desire. I want my white <laughs> girls white. I want my white girls white. I'm like, you did nothing. You did nothing but turn me on. Oh, you're like, God. hey, you like Drake? Who's Drake? I was like, oh, shit. I found a unicorn. I found a fucking unicorn, You boy. were like, do you like pumpkin spice? Yes, yep. I do. Oh, my God. Let's go. Yes, Let's I Let's go. I, I don't have the Uggs, though. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Them, but yes. That's so funny. <laughs> Someone asked, have you ever worked hospital security? Uh, No. I, I have not worked hospital security, and I will not work hospital security because hospital security demands dictates and and advocates for their officers to work unarmed i'm not doing it hospitals are no different than grocery stores and convenience stores shopping malls they are hubs for people to convene okay people that have mental illness people that have uh injuries people that are struggling people that are homeless hungry cold they gravitate to hospitals, okay? Also, good, sane, sober, moral people go to hospitals, and generally, when they are there, they are dealing with either the greatest day of their life, which is the birth of someone, or the absolute worst day of their life, which is someone is either hurt, sick, harmed, or dying. All of that can lead to people's emotions getting out of control and them reacting or responding in a negative way. So if you're working in security and you're forced to be unarmed and you have to handle with all of those people dealing with all of those issues, I will not do it. I find it highly offensive and highly disrespectful to the people that work in private security for hospitals to continue to advocate and push for them to be unarmed. You know, here, you we know, had that shooting last year here in Oregon, in Portland, uh, Bobby Smallwood was killed. Uh, I have been in contact with his father, his mother, um, you know, since since last year. Um, and I won't do it. And I, I'm not going to get into my rant about hospitals because I'll just go off. All right. I'm out.